Well, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. I'm Elliot Callen, CEO of Prosperity Financial Group, and I'd like to welcome you to Meet the Expert. Very exciting today. We've got Jean Charles Boisson here. He is the king of Napa Valley wine. And so we're going to talk a little bit about wine. We're going to talk about the business of wine. We're going to talk about varietals. Wine and, wine and I are very passionate. We have a love affair with each other. As you hear from him and his unbelievable passion for wine and the winemaking industry. You'll understand why I, I share that passion. Uh, if you need to reach us, I'm at Elliot, E-L-L-I-O-T, at prosperityfinancialgroup.com. It's www.prosperityfinancialgroup.com. And my direct line is 925-314-8503. And you can ask us questions, not just about this episode, but any other ones having to do with business or wine and have some fun. And if you want to meet Jean Charles or at least introduce yourself to his wines, uh, we'll show you how to get to his wineries uh, and just have a spectacular time. So let me welcome Jean Charles. How are you? Bonjour, Elliot. How are you? I'm Hi. delighted to be with you. And I prepared one of the best sparkling, the passion, you know, from Los Carneros to have a toast with you. You're having coffee. This is not right. I know. <laughs> You know, I, I'm sorry, I'm a coffee guy, and uh, I, I don't do any commercials for Juan Valdez or the country of Colombia, uh, but I do for wine. So. <laughs> hey, I think in that cup, you had some Cabernet. Something tells me that this is not coffee, not water. Maybe bubbles in that cup you just <laughs> used? That sounds pretty good, though. <laughs> so, Jean Charles, we were at your house this past Saturday night. I know people are viewing this, not today, they'll view it in the future. For the Billionaire's Ball, we had a spectacular time. It's a Thank throwback you. to the 1940s of when people wore tuxedos and got dressed up Saturday night. And I wish they did that every Saturday night because it really makes the night special. So thank you for having us, hosting us, and, and introducing us to your home for more than once we've been there. But once again, reintroducing us to your home. Well, thank you. And we were delighted to see you so well dressed up. You both came beautiful and extremely charming and sensual. I'm glad I saw you as well on the dance floor. And thank you for your great books. That was a wonderful gift. I'm delighted. And if your listeners do not know, Elliot is an amazing writer as well and has written numerous books. And he offered me one. And I'm going to read it on the plane in a few days on my way to France. So I'm excited. I'll be more intellectually savvy and financially clever. Well, thank you, uh, Jean-Charles. We That's very kind of you. We live our lives with a lot of uh, charity in here. And, and for people who don't know it, I'm president of our charity as well, A Brighter Day. It's a brighterday.info. And, and we can't, can't help but mix what we do with business, charity, altruism, good taste, and so forth. So again, thanks for being part of that. So I, I, have, some questions. I have some questions for you because you are the king of Napa. Well, thank you. Uh, at, at this moment, I'm just in awe of your success. And, and I say that in the kindest of ways. Thank uh, you. The, the word awe. So let, let, let's talk for a moment before we get into the wines and why you're drinking bubbly and what the other bottle is to your right with a beautiful label in front of the symbol and, and just in front of it, the business of wine, because you are at your core, you're not just a, a wonderful owner of wineries. There's wine to be made. There's money to be made in a world of wine. And you're not doing that for charity. So... <laughs> Well, we love to contribute to charities. This is why we need eventually to make money in the business. What, what has been really unusual for anyone in the wine world is to have had the life I've had because I was very fortunate, Elliot, very fortunate to have amazing grandparents and parents who are still alive today and who started the winery. So I was born as well as my sister in the living room when my parents started to make wine. So wine runs into my blood. Wine is part of my DNA. So I've made wine, as you know, since the age of five, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, I was making cuvées. And, you know, so, you know, for me, wine is not really a business. It's really a lifestyle. It's who I am. It's what I am. It's how I express myself. It's, it's really basically you know, the expression of who I am. This is why, you know, I live the life I live and I welcome you to my home, to all our wineries. They're yours as much as mine. I create to share. 
and this is what is so exciting. Wine allows you to, through this amazing beverage, gift of God, to be able to bring it to, to, together in front of people and to have people cheer and be together and open up thanks to wine. So I use wine as my collective, beautiful gift that brings people together. That's great. That's tremendous. So I want to tell you what we do and how this whole wine story got started. And I'll keep it short because I'm you're more important than I am in this conversation. No, no, no. It's a conversation. So I, we have, and I, you've seen a picture of our wine room and you're going to be, your team is going to be kind enough to pour for our wine outing on, Jan, on uh, June, July 23rd, excuse me, a Saturday. Very exciting. At our home. And, uh, and this will be our sixth event of Napa Comes to Lafayette and we're thrilled to have you. Uh, but I'll tell you why I do that. In my business of being a financial advisor and, and CEO of Prosperity Financial Group, um, I advise people all the time in, in the retirement that they need to develop passions and hobbies yeah. because the, the last thing you want to do is be a project person that what used to take an hour now takes eight hours to do. And that's what your day is filled with. So you spent the last four months rebuilding your bathroom and that's what your retirement is. And so I sat down with my wife about 10 years ago. And I said, you know, I advise people all the time as to develop great hobbies and great passions in retirement. And we talked about what ours would be. And we said, well, we love great wine. We collect it, uh, not at your level, but we, we have plenty of JCB and Raymond generation wine. I've got two cases of unopened JCB that my wife's yelling at me that we're not drinking fast enough. Uh, Take your time. Take your time. It's we never have about a too bad. And like any financial product, it's a product of pleasure. So it never goes bad. On the opposite, if you have JCB or Raymond, it improves with time. Yep. So there's appreciation in value and appreciation, obviously, in quality. That's great. And we have about a uh, thousand bottles at this point wow. in a very pretty wine tasting room. Uh, I know there are people with three and five thousand bottles who are like me, but I, I think I need to drink faster is what needs to happen here. Well, if you invite me more often at your house, we will deplete it together. I'll make, I'll make note of that. We also learned that we like great food. We cook food. I'm, a, I'm an amateur chef. Um, we go out for great food at wonderful restaurants. One of the ones you recommended that we went out to, Miller and Lux. And we went there because my wine is an avid watcher of your home videos that you make every single day. And she saw Miller and Lux, the owner being interviewed. And that's how we ended up at Miller and Lux. Yeah, with Tyler Florence, a great friend, a great chef. Exactly. Yeah, wonderful food. And, and, uh, but, but I have a question for you, Elliot. How did you get to build such an amazing wine collection? I mean, a thousand bottles is a lot of bottles. I've seen, obviously, pictures of your incredible wine cellar, which is phenomenal. How did you become passionate about it between finance and wine? So they're related because they're both passions. And I'm passionate about finance. So about 15 years ago, give or take, and, uh, I started to look for wine that I would like. And I was struggling at first because I was learning about why I, that I did. Why I kept drinking wine I didn't like. And if I didn't like it, it meant I didn't, couldn't really appreciate the flavor of it. It's a struggle I have with Pinot all the time or very oaky Chardonnay. It just didn't feel right on my palate. Or for some Pinots, it didn't feel enough on my palate. And I didn't realize that I was really enjoying large tannic structured cabs or from Napa or spicy Zinfandels from Sonoma. And in those days they were spicy. Today, they're not really that spicy, they're more fruit forward. And so I didn't understand it. So I went on a quest to get better at what I was doing, to, to learn how to cook better food, to learn how to eat better food, and to learn how to drink better wine and share better wine with friends. Because like you in your home, we, COVID aside, we have always been entertainers in our, entertainers in our home. We love to cook great food. I love to experiment on people. We love to share our wine. I don't collect wine for the sake of collecting. I collect wine to share with great friends. And, and so that, that just developed into its own collection. And congratulations. That's, I think you're doing it with the right positioning from your heart all the way to sharing and enjoying and, you know, all of that. So I commend you for this because for me, as we make wine and I help sculpting wine, crafting wine, defining wine, I will have people like you in my mind because I love when people open multiple bottles at dinner 
friends come over, they share. Wine is meant to be shared. And I always say to people per course, open two or three bottles. So you see the flavor profile, you see what you like and you share experiences and taste and, and sensory. So wine is all about that. And, and beyond everything else, it allows you to trigger conversation. So that's a fun tool that helps you to open many doors. Well, thank you. Let me ask you a little bit about wine, if we can trans transition to what actually wine is and varietals. You have a very broad inventory of, of different varietals of wine. You can see I'm a little narrower in my taste than you are in yours. Um, so let me ask you about your wines, because you've got a number of wineries and a, you've got Buena Vista that I've been to, which is wonderful. And I think it's the oldest winery in, in California, you've got JCB, which is a relatively young company in, in Yonville, They're right in the middle of downtown Yonville. Um, right. An incredible crystal and art collection. You've got the one you just bought, Elizabeth Spencer, which has been around for many years, both Elizabeth and Spencer. That was a husband and wife team that's now part of your JCB collection. You've got Raymond Winery that's been around for, I think, 40 plus years now. Um, and I understand you just broke away uh, one of the lines from them uh, the Frenchie line, when I used to buy their, their Frenchie wine, is kind uh, of my good bring to party wine, bring to somebody else's house wine. Uh, yeah. So you got a lot of things. Tell me the difference in wines that our clients can understand. Lots of people, because thousands of people will see this and they will say, Elliot, you're crazy not to be a big fan of Pinot. And other people will say, wow, you good that you understand your taste. You understand structure and tannins and Cabernet. And you like some champagne. We had two cases of champagne that we just donated to our charity that was given away for bubbles and brunch breakfast to people and they loved your champagne uh and can i i'm, I'm, I'm hopefully i can say champagne and not sparkling wine because it, it's both and let me just have you talk for a moment about varietals and why you're broad and why that's important and why i'm so narrow because other clients tell me again i'm crazy and other tell me, nobody calls me brilliant but they call me smart every now and then yeah well elliot i may refer to uh managing a financial portfolio when you want to have fixed income, you want to have derivatives, you want to have crypto, you want to have stock, you may want to play with options, you may want to, you know, so you diversify. I was born making Chardonnay and Pinot, Burgundy, so it's my life and it's the essence of who I am. Then I branched out into Sonoma with Deloge Vineyards, made amazing Chardonnay, Pinot and great Zinfandel. So I discovered Zinfandel. I was very open-minded to it. Today, I love it. And Buena Vista is the founder of Zinfandel in California. Then, you know, I branched out more into Napa Valley. So obviously I went to those traditional Bordeaux grape varieties, you know, Cabernet, Merlot, Cabernet Franc, Malbec, and Petit Verdot. So I got very curious. So I think what is important, like it is in your business of financial products, is always to be open-minded and curious, you talk about Champagne, Chardonnay Pinot, typically. You could do a Blanc de Blanc, which is Chardonnay only. You could do Blanc de Noir, which is Pinot. And a Brut is the blend of both, which is what I'm having now. So I really feel what is important, like in your business of finance, is to be curious, to open your mind and to allow your mind to be welcoming diversity. It's the same as in food. One day you may in the mood for Chinese food, next day for Thai food. And then the next day you may say, okay, let me go to Japanese food. Another time you're gonna go Argentinian beef. Another time you're gonna go all American food and California, very nice green food. And then you're gonna say, oh, I wanna go French or I wanna go Italian or I wanna go Indian. I think the world of wine is very similar to art, to food, as I just used as an example, you may like impressionism and you've seen at my house, I like surrealism, or you may want to go into traditional antiques. So you may go to modern antiques, so modern furniture. So I think wine is the same, different moments, different experiences, different flavor profile, different food. You go with a pizza, you may go with a great Pinot, you may go with a great Sangiovese, you may go with a wonderful Zinfandel with more spice and pepper. So you choose the moment, the experience, the people we're with. I don't think we want to be monolithic in our approach. It's like saying, I only like stocks or I only like high-tech stocks. I mean, you got to go traditional and buy maybe 
you know, traditional industries or logistic companies and then high tech. And then you may want to go as well to luxury. That portfolio together makes you having that great return. And I think that's what is important. Great. And we're talking with Jean-Charles Bonson, who is a, one of the kings of Napa at this moment, kings of wine in Thank Napa you. Valley. He's with JCB and Raymond and Buena Vista and Deloche and so many more. And I, I don't want to forget that he's also the owner of the Oakville Grocer. And for many of us, that is a stomping ground and a stagecoach for entering the Napa Valley. And we all stop there and get something that's just absolutely yummy that you can't find anywhere else. That's right. No, we love that place, um, Elliot. And thank you for mentioning it. You know, it's the oldest continuous operated store on the west of the Mississippi, founded in actually 1881. And what makes it so exciting is from pizzas to burgers, to great delis, to salad, to sandwiches, to great produce, great coffees, great wines, and a museum to Napa Valley. So in the Victorian house that you love so much, you can get a card, taste over 68 wines by the glass, and really experience the art of what Napa Valley has to offer within all the producers of Napa. So one-stop shopping, one collective place where you could taste every AVA of Napa Valley, 16 of the AVAs of Napa, and obviously discover the history of every one of them from Sam Brennan to, of course, Grant to, you know, Young to all the great people who created this amazing Napa Valley. So we love bringing history to you with food, with wine, and obviously with the heritage of America that we really love. So I know your family owns a Burgundy winery, vineyard and winery, which is different in France. Wineries in California are the winery and the, the uh, winemaking program are all right next to each other. And I know in most yeah. countries, that's not how it is. They're separated sometimes by miles, yeah. if not 50 miles sometimes apart. Uh, I have good friends who collect Burgundy. They probably have much of your family's Burgundy. And they really look down on American Pinot and said they would never drink it. Uh, and they go to the Burgundy auctions. Uh, and some of those bottles, you know, go for crazy money. Um, so what is the difference between French Burgundy, Burgundian style, and American Pinot, particularly your Deloche and other ones? Well, I would suggest to your friends that most likely I may know and hopefully have our wines in their cellar to be open-minded to both because I think the beauty of Pinot and Chardonnay in the Russian River in the Sonoma coast of California is quite amazing and I think the difference is one we've been making Pinot and Chardonnay for thousands of years in Burgundy so we have an extensive experience in that field but it's a different flavor profile Wine is very earthy, very deep, very intense, has that beautiful earthiness to it with ethereal characteristics, that's Burgundy. And in California, we may be more flamboyant, more fruit forward with a deeper concentration thanks to the ripeness of the grapes here. So two different styles, but what I love to do as we did this weekend together is we have both and we try both. And at dinner, we dive into both. And that's what I love the most is to be able to compare, contrast, enjoy both and have a great time with both. So my recommendation to everyone is to really be open-minded to both, is to really be um, you know, inclusive of both. Because if you start the meal maybe with a great cinema coast, a lot of fruit, a lot of flamboyance, a lot of seduction, you evolve with a Grand Cru or Premier Cru from Burgundy, which may be more austere, more earthy, um, you know, a lot of depth and a lot of intensity, both work very well in the meal and the progression of the meal. So for me, it's a journey. It's not one and not the other. I could have chosen, Elliot, to live in Burgundy, where I was born, to continue to build our Burgundy winery, which I'm doing anyhow, and never to come to California. But I thought both would complement each other and one and the other equals three rather than two. So I want to have both. Why not? <laughs> Why being exclusive when you could be inclusive? What does Burgundian style mean, jean jean Burgundian style is a technique of winemaking, which means sorting the grapes by hand for the red wines going on open top, wood for manor, doing punch down, doing very slow maceration, 
and giving that very delicate, very emotional touch to the wine with long aging in, in barrels. And I think that's really what we mean when we talk about Burgundian style Pinot, to try to make a very sophisticated, delicate, very romantic and, and very seductive wine. At the same time for the Chardonnay is to make it with influence of oak, but not too much. So you keep the minerality and of course the intensity of the place. And finally, to be very terroir oriented, which is the blend of the earth, the climate and the plant, refer to the sense of place, that small village coming out with a wine like Vougeot, like Gevray Chambertin, like Bone, like Pomard, being very specific to the area. So that's what Burgundy style is. So the wine that you have, the wine bottles that you have, Jean Charles, and this is great what you're saying. And if somebody needs to reach me, it's it's Elliot, E-L-L-I-O-T, at prosperityfinancialgroup.com or the website Prosperity Financial Group, uh, www.prosperityfinancialgroup, uh, and 925-314-8503. And if you want to drink wine with us, give me a call and we'll meet you at Raymond or one of Jean Charles' other wineries. And of course. And we'll try that wine. So I want to talk to you about some of the wines that I know that I'm intimate with now uh, and, why, uh, and why I'm intimate with them. And one of those bottles is to your right as well. So I've learned at the JCB Lounge, I like number one, number 10, and the Surreal. I've learned at Raymond that my favorite is Stag's Leap and um, Generations. Yeah, for sure. You have good taste. And you talk about the top guns, Elliot. Yeah, I guess my taste is gone. You know, when I first started to buy these high-end wines, they were $85. Uh, now they're $250 and $300 and, and everything's gone up. And I think somebody told me the other day they bought a $79 or an $85 Screaming Eagle for $6,000. And I'm like, oh, oh. My, I didn't even drink that. I, I don't know how to open that. Well, that's a thousand a glass. That's a little expensive for me too. <laughs> By the way, why, what, what makes that particular varietal? Because it's kind of like playing Pebble Beach. You'd love to play when I'm buying you the round of Pebble Beach. You don't want to spend it yourself. And that's what I think of Screaming Eagle. If you want to buy it for me, I'll drink it, but I would never buy that on my own. <laughs> well, you know, that's called elasticity of demand, right? It's a, it's a basic economic rule. The more demand you have, uh, you know, there's only one way to play with supplies to allocate by the amount of the bottle and the price points to make sure that you optimize. So I feel we need to remain reasonable in wine prices because I want to make sure for the wines we make, you see the cereal list is around $500 a bottle. 100 point wine, very reasonable for 100 pointer. Number one, number 10, a 98, 99 point wine, and they $300 a bottle. So we're not going crazy. Even generation, 99 point wine is only $165 a bottle. So we've been very reasonable, Elliot, pricing our wine. Look at Chateau Buena Vista that you love, 200 bucks for a bottle of wine, 98 points, Parker, and Wine Spectator. So, you know, when we talk about high points, we love ourselves to want to make sure that you buy the wine and you drink them. When you divide by five, because there's five glasses in a bottle of wine like this, you don't spend necessarily an arm and leg and you don't feel every sip you have, you know, you're spending your entire savings. So for me, I like, to be reasonable. I want people to drink the wine, to share the wine, even if it's a hundred point. And even, I mean, the Surrealist could be $2,000 a bottle. We make 6,000 bottles, we would sell them as much. I want to keep it reasonable. So you drink it and you enjoy it. On top of it, look at this. We put a jewelry on top of each bottle. The bottle is clear. It becomes a decanter. It has a glass top finish on top. I mean, look, all of them decorated differently. This is a great skull just being released. I mean, all those wines fetch amazing scores and they're meant to be collectibles. We were the first one to actually put jewelry in the world of wine on the bottle. I'm very excited about it because I mean, look at this. Isn't it sexy and cool? And you wanna have it. So I think that's the whole point of, you know, winemaking and, really providing for you an amazing experience and without, again, having secondary thoughts after buying a bottle of wine and, and opening it. I go to so many cellars, Elliot, where I see thousands and thousands of bottles 
at a thousand dollars a pop and people never open them because they say, wow, I spent so much money. Um, I'm having secondary thoughts opening the cork. And I'm of the school. We open the wine, we drink it, we celebrate, we live life. Like we did on Saturday night. Didn't we have fun? That's what, that's what wine should be about. Great food, great wine. And don't forget, first and foremost, great friends, because that should be number one. Exactly. And wines bring us together. It has that romantic, luxurious, uh, sophisticated way of bringing people together without necessarily getting you too high too quickly. You could sip, you can enjoy. It's a cultural experience. It's a monument of culture. And that's what I love about wine. You talk about architecture, history, gardening, art, you know, decoration, designs, fashion, beauty, emotions. All the topics are summarized in this glass of wine. And it's a cultural experience. And that's why I'm a big fan. So in the business of winemaking, because you've got a gorgeous bottle, you've got gorgeous bottles on surreal, you've got some beautiful flavors. Um, from a cost standpoint, is it like everything else? The profit margins are so much larger on these wines for the winery. And yes, it takes more, but it's, it doesn't take four times the amount of money to produce it. But there's more profit because it's just a better wine. Well, indeed. So I think the cost of wine, obviously, on a bottle like this is very high. And specifically when you start to put this fancy bottle and this unbelievable jewelry. So, you know, we want to make sure that as well, an expensive bottle of wine like this one at $500 a bottle, the guest, the consumer have an amazing bottle in their hands besides the liquid itself is everything else. So we don't cut corners. We love when you have a full experience. It's like this glass I'm having, you have them at home. It's the Baccarat glasses. It's the one we designed with Baccarat, the most historical crystal maker in the world of crystal. And look at this. This is all about luxury. This is the red wine glass. Listen to the sound. This is the bell of Lafayette church or temple or mosque or whatever your religion is. This is the finest of the finest. So again, we want people to have the finest. And this is why the attention to details, the cost of wine is important. And, and you know, building the experience, this is really what we're all about. And this is where we have so much fun in it. I'll tell you a quick funny story because I'm a fan of wine glasses. Uh, because I know it really makes a difference. Uh, Tammy and I, my wife and I, went to a food and wine pairing uh, not too long ago in, in Sonoma County. And they ordinarily, yes. do, <laughs> they ordinarily do a great job. They serve most of the red wine in white wine, smaller glasses. And I said, and I know glasses. Well, after the, why are you doing that? And I asked that question, you know, the inquiring mind question that people don't want to be asked. And I said, why are you doing it? And he said, well, the winemaker felt that the smaller the glass would keep the, the aroma more in and you don't want to let the aroma out too quickly, uh, which is the opposite of what everything I've been taught is let the red wine breathe, let it out, let it fill the room and, and want you to eat more. And Absolutely. A wine is like a human being. We have to realize that an amazing wine like this vintage, 2017, 2018, have been captured in the bottle for at least a few years. And specifically, if you open an older vintages for maybe eight to 10 years. So the wine needs to breathe like us. We need to open up. We need to oxygenize the wine. We need to allow the air to come in in order to break out the molecule and bring a maximum amount of bouquet. Bouquet is the aroma, the aromatic expression of the wine. So this is why I think a big glass is very important. And a big glass, highly open at the base and closed on the top. So as you bring your nose, it funnels all the aroma to your nostril and then you can inhale nicely and then you swirl and then you drink. So you want actually a large container, not too tight. This one is meant for champagne and sparkling wine. This is why it's a little smaller. I think let's that glass, by the way, I believe it's called a tulip shape. Yeah. Well, relatively new out there versus a Pinot, just kind of an open bowl shape. What's the difference between those two? That's right. So this one luckily is meant to be all in one. 
This is why I call it the passion collection, the one and only. So I've designed it in a certain height, certain proportion that it fits all. So I recommend if you want anything in this world, it's the passion collection. It's $180 a glass, so it's expensive, but it lasts forever. It's crystal. So it's the finest, not glass. Crystal is the finest historical clear container that will bring any liquid, whether it's champagne, wines, distilled spirits. And this shape is the ultimate because it has that tulip with the rounder, bigger shape. So it combines both in one. So this is the one, obviously, Elliot, I recommend you have in your dining room. Not that you don't, I'm sure you do already because you're a man of taste and you're a man of style. So I'm coming to Lafayette to see you. I hope we'll drink in Passion Collection. That sounds great. I'd love to have you for dinner. That, that's terrific. You know, you have some unbelievable collections of art and uh, crystal. Yes. Uh, and for people that want to see that on display, there's a crystal room in Raymond, but more importantly, at the JCB Lounge, you have some magnificent uh, crystal pieces there. Tell us about this. Yeah, so this is, uh, Raymond is a great place. Buena Vista has a huge collection in Sonoma as well as in First Street, Napa Valley, and in Napa, you know, we have a new tasting lounge named, you know, Chateau Buena Vista, where you have an incredible display there as well. The point for us is always to bring out beautiful crystals. So you understand how wine could be decanted, irated, and served. And I'm going to show you one of uh, the decanters you pass me those two, thank you. Of, of the one we have here, those beautiful decanters. And I've designed two that are very, very important. And uh, Anna is bringing them to me so we can really look at what creates an amazing decanter. And this is at the JCB Lounge in Yonville. You could buy all the Baccarat, Lalique, and Saint Louis decanter, as well as Mosier. But look at those babies. This is where you carry out the wine. So this is the actual container. Here we go. You aerate the wine for like half an hour, 45 minutes, and you serve it in this beautiful decanter in the glass, what I'm doing right now. So you have one for red wine and white wine and one for champagne. This one is made for champagne or sparkling wine. This has been featured in Run Reports, Wall Street Journal, all the top magazines that you can imagine because Vogue, we've been really having a tremendous amount of press on it because this is the first and only in champagne. So you want to carafe your champagne to irate it and same with the red wine. So what that's makes it champagne? To break out the molecular structure of the bubbles, to have less bubbles, but very refined so they dance on your palate. That's what we look for. Okay. I mean, as long as we're talking about aerators, so I've been told that if you're drinking wine older than, call it 1980, don't aerate it, you'll kill it. And then other people have a, the exact opposite opinion, always aerate your wine. What's the right way to do this? Well, there's no systematic rule. I think it really depends which vintage is. So if the vintage is still very fruity, very robust, like an 82, 84, I will decant. I would not decant to 69. Sometimes I could because it's still big, but I would not decant to 67. I would not decant to 64, but I may decant to 61. So it's vintage specific. The younger it is, I recommend the more you should decant because you want to irate, you want to give it the volume of the air. So there's no systematic rules. For me, I love decanting. One, it's beautiful. And two, for the reason I gave, Irate your wine, give them air, make them feel comfortable, and you can decant it for 10, 15 minutes, and then, of course, serve it so you don't lose the aroma. So, Jean Charles, let's go back to again to the business of wine, if we could. Yeah. Because I'm a big fan of, of what you do, and obviously, I'm a fan of your wine, or I wouldn't be buying it. Thank um, you. And we've turned many people now onto uh, your wineries. One or the other. And we're very grateful. Thank you so much for that, Elliot. Yeah, you're very welcome. And But I want to talk to you about the business of, of the, the marketing side of wine because it's no good to make great wine and no one buys it. It's not good to be the best kept secret in my industry, financial services, or your industry, wine and winemaking. That's 
You know, people go out of business with great products all the time. That's right. Uh, and you are in a marketing machine. I'll call you a marketing genius. No, uh, no, you're very kind, but not really. And we just do what we love to do, you know. The passion is what drives us. Well, you're doing a lot of good things. So if somebody wanted to learn what you're doing, how often to follow what you're doing, because you've you're integrating on your online program and and maybe you can give us the website for that too. Uh, you're integrating food, health, wealth. I saw a yoga class. Excuse me, my wife, like I said, is an avid. Thank you. Uh, follower Great of yours. Classes, food classes. We do jewelry, as you know, I'm wearing it today. You can see one of my jewelry pieces. Yeah. So I think people could go on to Boisse, B-O-I-S-S-E-T collection.com or JCB collection.com which is my personal website and they could go on jc underscore boisse on my instagram or facebook where they could follow our jcb live and all the videos we do and all the engagement we do because i think what is fun is to be part of a community and what your wife who i adore and she was beautiful by the way this weekend what thank a you beautiful beautiful outfit is, um, is loving is to be part of the energy of, of what we do. Wine, fragrance, jewelry, food is what I love to do. So on our website, you could be part of all of it and certainly follow us. OakvilleWineMerchant.com or Oakville Grocery on Instagram as well is an amazing one where you could see a lot of videos, a lot of cheese discovery and, and so forth. So we want to educate people. We want to transfer and and pass the little we know uh, to them so we get all inspired this is the fun of it well perhaps in the fall early fall we can do a cheese and wine pairing somewhere at one of your locations i would love to you come over we'll have a lot of cheese we could choose the region or the country of origin you want we'll pair it with wine we'll have a great time we'll gain weight no you don't gain weight with cheese actually and we'll have a lot of fun well, we did. Uh, I want you to know, I, you don't know this because we threw a party many years ago. You know, COVID had just kind of made us all lose a little bit of track of time here. There are two lost years for the world. But we ran a party in the Red Room at Raymond. Oh, thank you. Uh, we did that years and years ago. And it was uh, just a wine tasting and a great day and a, a great afternoon. And and I think uh, and we'll be attending your generation's opening soon. I uh, hope so. Our clients love these things. We did two virtual wine tastings last year. We, we sent out food. We're talking about doing a virtual cooking class with wine again this year. And I think a cheese, I'm a little bit of a cheese um, lover. I had a French teacher in ninth grade that introduced us to cheese and I've never stopped eating it. Um, and hopefully I don't die of heart disease from all of it. <laughs> I know you won't. <laughs> you won't. Don't but it, it, it's just such a great pair. Uh, so I'll, I'll keep you posted on that. Let me ask you about uh, the food and wine pairing, because in America, it's nothing like it is in France. Uh, when, when Tammy and I went to Bordeaux um, and we had a discussion about how much wine, well, how much wine will we buy that's in our budget? That's right. And we came up with a number that we will not buy more than nine cases of wine while we're there. Yeah. Uh, and we didn't. We didn't come even close to that because the French... Uh, again, wine places, we're telling us, you know, the problem with you Americans is you like to drink wine by itself, which I do. My wife does. We don't need food. We don't care if we have food with our wine. We like the wine and we pick out our wine before we pick out our food, not our food and then the wine. We're, <laughs> I love it. And I, I know you, the French folks, I know you're from France and I don't want to minimize or belittle your, your heritage there, but they made fun of us because they pick out the food and then they pair it with wine. And they said, we're, we don't really know what we're doing. And that's why we're not Bordeaux lovers or Cabernet and Cabernet Franc lovers and Petit Verdot lovers, because we don't know what we're doing basically on a global scale. So are they right now wrong? Or am I right? Is there room for both of us? Oh, absolutely. I think either way, depending on how you enter into the equation, I think the fun part is I love the fact that you pick your wine first and then you say, okay, around it. I'm going to constitute this incredible meal and this food and wine pairing. I think it's fun. You know, vice versa, I think it goes both ways. I think 
what is exciting uh, is again to order multiple bottles of wine and to treat wine as a food ingredient and to treat wine as a flavor profile that really complements anything. And, you know, to, to go wild, like tonight, we're going to have a vegetarian dinner of all things because our friends coming are vegetarian. And I've picked like five, six bottles of wine that we're going to have that I think represents well the type of food we're going to have, but I'm going to let them choose because who is to know that a wine, a Pinot or Cab will go better with this. So I think as well, it's fun to bring diversity to the table and pick. It's like having multiple dishes. So to be open-minded, to be, to be creative and to create with both that you bring to the table. Well, that's great. You know, I, I said earlier in the show that we're doing Napa Comes to Lafayette on Saturday, July 23rd. Yes. With some of the wines from your organization. And we, we haven't picked them all out, but we'll do a pairing on mix and match and have a little bit of fun that day. We tell everybody to bring a dish that you wish to share um, and don't be afraid to mix it. But we have, I think last year, uh, with uh, people purchased about $15,000 give or take of wine, which was doubled the year before or the two years before that because of COVID. Uh, and then the wineries and yours has been so charitable with the, with the brighter day, which is wonderful. But I'm looking forward to it. So if people like your wine and they can't make it to Lafayette, excuse me, to uh, Napa or Yonville and they want to taste your wine, now come to our house on the 23rd, be in touch with us uh, because we love your wine enough to have you there. Uh, and we love the personality that you we bring to it because uh, your wine, like you, Jean-Charles, has a personality, have multiple personalities. You probably have multiple personalities yeah, too. Of course, of course. But that's a show, that's a topic for a different show. <laughs> <laughs> How many times have I been reincarnated yeah. or resurrected? You know, I believe in that. But it, the nice part about your wine is it's so broad and it's varietal. Your wine family then I could say, I like, as you call bubbly, but I like champagne, but I can't stand Pinot. I like champagne, but I can't stand Petit Verdot. I hate champagne, but I love Car I have There's a spot for all of us. That's right. And I don't just have to be broad. I could be narrow or I can be broad. I could say, I like steak and I could do ribeye and strip and, and filet and, and so forth. Or I could be more like I am. And that says, look, those are all very good, but I, I prefer to have this mouth-watering, melting filet mignon. And that's how I look at wine also. I prefer to have that great wine that's in front of you and a one and a 10 and whatever, because it's so mouth-watering. It's so big, but I know the people that I'm drinking wine with don't have to share my taste. That's very true. And this is the reason why we make such a broad, um, you know, range of wine from Burgundy to the South of France. So Burgundy, Beaujolais, Jura, you know, Rhone Valley, south of France, Napa, Sonoma, sparkling champagne. Why? Because we want to have a lot of people at the table. And, you know, if you have a different taste, it's okay. If you have diverse flavor profile, it's okay. The same reason why, Elliot, if you have a different skin color, you have a different religion, if you have a different belief, it's all okay. I want to make sure that everybody belongs to the table. It's not about monolithic thoughts. It's about being as diverse as inclusive. If you like Rhone Valley and Syrah Grenache, be my guest. If you like Zinfandel, be my guest. We'll have something for you. If you like Pinot and Cabernet, we have something for you. And that's the fun of it. As long as it's well made, made with integrity, with discipline, with talent and sophistication, that's what we like. Yeah. Let me ask you a short day question, John Charles, and I know we're running out of time here. And that is that the difference between, because I've, speak, I've spoken to people who only like whites, um, and I'm trying not to look down on them for only liking whites here. No, 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 no. no. As a red wine lover. But I know there, there are three whites that I think, maybe four whites that I think of in that world. I think of a, I think of a minerally white. Yeah. I think of a, a buttery white. I think of a oaky white. And I think of a um, uh, mineral, a Burgundian, a Burgundian white, style white. I yeah. think of them as four very distinct flavor patterns. Um, and I think for me, I, I know because of, as a not great Chardonnay person, I'm much more of a buttery. I call it my, my wimpy way of drinking white wine is make sure it's buttery, 
malolactic acid and all that stuff. But yeah, what is the difference not? between them to white wine drinkers? I, I think you've described it beautifully. So you have the Chablis style Burgundy maybe, which is, you know, no oak, very mineral. You know, it's in a soil that used to be ocean. So very Carmarangian, meaning very oyster beds. So very mineral. You have more limestone and a calcareous soil, which could have that beautiful flintiness with a little bit of oak. So little vanilla, little tones of floral. And then you could go to the Loire Valley, which is very floral, the Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc. And then you could go to that very buttery, rich, fully malolactic style that you've described, and it's all good. But they all fit on a spectrum. One is more vibrant, the other one is more vivacious, and the other one may be richer, denser. And it's fine. You know, one, you would like it with sashimi. The other one, you may like it more with curry or Indian food. And the other one, you may like it more with a sole manier. And the other one, you may like it with a trout. Or the other one, you may love it with, you know, roasted chicken. So I think it's all good to love it all. We cannot just be one way. We need to always be open to different flavor profile. And then find what you like. And, and then from there, go and and be, be, again, very curious. I think it's important not to just say, okay, I only like this, and that's all I like, and that's all I want. I think keep trying. So, uh, Jean-Charles, if people want to learn more about your wine collection, your wineries, your family of wine, your Oakville Grocer, your Crystal, yep. best place for them to go is where? My Boisset Collection, M-Y-B-O-I-S-S-E-T Collection, dot com or jcbcollection.com jcbcollection.com which is my first name jcbcollection.com on those two websites you can have a global idea and then if you want to zoom in into a given winery you go to raymond vineyards buena vista winery elizabeth spencer deloge vineyards bouchard and then all the french so all of that is hosted under boisset the B-I, B-O-I, double S-E-T, collection.com. So John well, thanks Charles, for asking. I'm thrilled. Oh, I, we're ha- look, we're, we're thrilled that you're part of this. We're always glad to bring you some business, and we're glad when you bring it to us. So well, we love awesome. what you do at Prosperity Investments, and obviously you as an individual for the wine world, and how great those interviews are, and how charismatic you are, and to bring more people in the world of wine in such a great way. So I love the fact that you include in your financial return wine because isn't wine giving you the highest return on investment? <laughs> well, we also include you quite a bit in our charity, A Brighter Day, or a brighterday.info because we oh. have a golf outing in July. We have a big gut gala and you have been very generous for many years and your organization has uh, that help us raise money. But also because of that, we've touched thousands of families to help them with stress and depression and stopping teen suicide. So thank you for that as well. Always, always. And Elliot, what is so cool is to be friends, to know your lovely wife and family, to soon go to your house in Lafayette. As a Frenchman, we love Lafayette, you know. He helped kick out the British out of the United States and then master the independence of the country in 1776. So, you know, Lafayette is a great place. We're very proud of what you do for charity and and we're delighted to be part of it. And thank you so much for having us on your show. This means a lot to us and to bring more people to our world. So thank you. Well, thank you. And if you'd like to reach me, I'm at uh, Elliot at prosperityfinancialgroup.com and Prosperity Financial Group and 925-314-8503. We've been talking with Jean Charles of JCB, and uh, he's given you uh, the best ways to reach him. And if you want to know which wine I like best and where to go first, give me a holler. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you, Elliot. All the best and cheers. 